Look, thank you very much to Nesh and to Gordon and to Stuart. It is so fantastic to be here at Disruption and what an amazing crowd and what an inspiring group of people who are involved in small and medium sized enterprises. I reckon I've got the best job in Australia of being Small Business Minister and I know how important small business is because like many of you I actually come from a family that's been deeply engaged in small business for a very long period of time. My grandparents started their very first small business uh, when they first got married. My grandmother made felt ties and my grandfather sold them door to door. And that's a pretty tough business to be in. But they made enough money from that business to then invest it in another business, a milk bar. And through that, they made enough money from that business to then invest it into a licensed grocery. And that was the business that they then had for the next 30 years of their working life. My mother grew up living above the shop, which is a pretty typical experience for, for many people who are engaged in small business. And she worked in the shop um, during uh, her, her school years. And the very first holiday that my grandparents took was actually on their retirement when they sold out of their business and they were able to take the time out of their, on, of their business in order to actually take a break. Um, my parents had their own small business. It was a retail business and I worked in that business in the same sort of way that my mother uh, worked in her grandparents' business. And in fact, I was paid in Chinese takeaway food. That was my favorite. No, no award wages for me. It was Chinese food, but that was enough incentive for me and I learned a lot from that experience, um, like so many people, in terms of how you treat customers, in terms of the value of money, and frankly, how every small business risks everything. They put it all on the line, and Dinesh was telling me with net stripes that the P and his beautiful wife, Sadia, they sold their house in order to invest in their business, and that is very, very typical of so many small businesses in this country who risk all of their capital to invest it in their business, to create an opportunity for themselves, for their families, and for the people that they employ. And there are more than three million small businesses in this country who employ around about four and a half million Australians. And that is absolutely incredible. The contribution that they make to the Australian economy is around about $340 billion each and every year. And these small businesses, these businesses are actually 97% of all business in this country. Not only to survive, but to absolutely thrive. And I really want to thank you very much for the opportunity to be with you tonight at this very high octane event and the opportunity to meet with so many inspiring people. So our task as a coalition is very much to focus on innovation, and entrepreneurial activity. And we know that if we can do this and if we can get the incentives right, the economy will grow. We will continue to have the growth that we have achieved every year. It was 3% last year. There were more than 300,000 jobs created last year and that that will continue on. But it will only happen if we get the economic environment right. We've had 25 years of uninterrupted economic growth in this country. And there's only one other advanced economy in the world that's been able to do better than that. So the decisions that we make today are going to affect our opportunity into the future. And we, we are at a crossroads as a nation. Our economy is going through a period of transition and we need to be a much more diversified economy that can produce not only products, but also fantastic services that people can enjoy. Uh, Dinesh has mentioned that the Coalition has announced as part of our economic plan for the growth and jobs and tax cut. We think that it is really important that our taxation system rewards hard work and rewards effort. And we know that a dollar in your pocket is worth a hell of a lot more than a dollar that's redistributed by the government. So that's why we're delivering a company tax cut of 2.5% uh, for small business. So you're paying 27.5 cents in the dollar rather than 30 cents in the dollar from the 1st of July of this year. And that's for businesses with a turnover of less than $10 million. It used to be, used to be, the definition of small business from the ATO definition was a turnover of less than $2 million. 
dollars. But frankly, we know that small business, many small businesses, have an aspiration to grow. And they don't want to be limited by artificial definitions. And so that's why we've put the definition of small business at less than 10 million in turnover so that you'll pay less tax. You'll actually get a tax discount if in fact you are unincorporated, which we think is also very, very important. Uh, but we want you to have more money in your pocket because we know that any dollar in your pocket will be reinvested into your business. So in addition to that, um, we're also extending the instant asset write-off for those businesses who've got a turnover of less than $10 million. Now what the instant asset write-off delivers is an opportunity for businesses to invest in an eligible asset up to the value of $20,000 uh, in as many assets, in fact, as you like, right up until the 30th of June 2017. So in an incident that's become quite famous around the nation, I was actually talking to a small business owner in my electorate that in Higgins, cafe owner who had just tipped over the $2 million threshold, employs around about 20 people in his business. And I said to him, what's one of the big impediments for you in growing your business? And he said to me, well, look, one of the big impediments for me is that one of my busiest days is actually on a Saturday morning. I've got people who want to come in here for breakfast and I cannot produce toast fast enough in order to get the plates on the table in order to turn customers over. And I said, well, what's going to change that for you? And he said, well, actually, I've had my eye on this commercial toaster for a while. I said, how much is that going to cost? He said, $6,000. And I said, and what, what difference will that make? He said, well, look, if I buy this, I'll be able to produce the toast, I'll be able to get more customers through. He said, and if I can do that, I'll employ more people to serve them. Because that's what will happen when I get the opportunity to grow my business. It makes sense. And this is what we want to see replicated right throughout the country. We know that, um, though, with, with all of this, um, we need to simplify red tape and unnecessary regulation around small business as well. And while I can't speak for local governments or state governments, we know that the interaction between all of those regulations can have a, a pretty devastating effect on small businesses that frankly want to be able to spend their time concentrating on their business rather than all of the red tape that occupies them. But because I've also got the Assistant Treasurer portfolio and because that's now been combined with the small business portfolio, I've actually got all of the regulators within my Ballywick now. And one of the key regulators, of course, is the Australian Taxation Office. And one of the big complaints I hear from small business is around the business activity statement. And the fact that there is so much paperwork involved with that. So we've listened. We've said, right, you as small business have said to us this is something that we need to fix and this is a priority for small business. So we're going to do something about it. We're reducing the number of items on the BAS from seven down to three. And this is going to have a very significant impact on small business and medium-sized businesses. When I talked to, to Con, the cafe owner that I mentioned just before, he actually had his account with him, which was rather helpful. And I turned to his account and I said, what difference practically is this going to make for your business? And he said, well, actually, it's going to mean about $5,000 less that I have to, you know, either in time or in actual hard dollars uh, contribute towards um, the accounting that goes into keeping the books on this. So that is going to come into place from the 1st of July next year for all small businesses, but uh, it comes into pilot phase from the 1st of July this year for the 2,000 businesses that actually put their hand up to sign up for that. We've made changes to pay-as-you-go entry thresholds, which has meant 565,000 fewer taxpayers were required to enter the PAYG instalment regime, and that's going to save small business around $67 million a year in red tape as well. But as Dinesh has mentioned, we live in a world of disruption, but that also brings with it great opportunity. Our access to technology is fueling creativity, innovative business models that does disrupt the status quo. And we live in a global world now, which means that we can take advantage of access to new markets. The startup sector is one that, if we nurture it properly, can create over half a million jobs and contribute around $109 million, sorry, billion dollars to Australia's economy by 2033. 
Now, Australia has taken a giant step towards reaching those numbers when the government released its National Innovation and Science Agenda, a $1.1 billion science agenda in December of last year. <coughs> to give you an example, it will be easier for budding businesses to raise equity finance with a 20% non-refundable tax offset for investors. There will also be a 10-year exemption on capital gains tax if investments are held for at least three years. But it's not just the big ticket items which make a difference to small business. We know that there are opportunities that small business can take advantage of in order to grow their businesses through embracing the digital economy. And so many opportunities can be found now online whether it's taking advantage of those marketing opportunities found on Facebook, Google Ads, news sites, or utilising online marketplaces or payment systems. These are all great tools that you can use in order to grow your business. In fact, many of our newest and most successful retailers can now be found online. And I'll just give you one example. Uh, Shopo is an example of this. Shopo is a small business that started off in a little garage in Sydney in September of 2010. Owner Jane Liu had a dream that she would provide fun, on-trend fashion at a price that was affordable for people. Two months later, she actually set up a physical store, but she closed it in 2013 to focus on her faster-growing online store. Shopo now aims to be the largest online boutique retailer of women's fashion in Australia and it's all being done online. And imagine if it becomes the biggest retailer online, imagine what it will do when all of those opportunities to access new markets overseas present themselves. We know we need to create those opportunities for small and medium sized businesses to access those new markets. And the coalition has been absolutely focused on creating those new market opportunities through free trade agreements that we've been able to conclude in a very short space of time with China, with Japan, with South Korea, through the Trans-Pacific Partnership. And we're now focused on trade negotiations with Canada, Mexico, Colombia, and pursuing new opportunities in the Indo-Pacific region with India and also with Indonesia. The Regional Comprehensive Economic Partnership countries as well, the Gulf Cooperation Council and Pacific Island countries through the PESA Plus Agreement are going to be the next phase of those agreements that we are looking to conclude. Because we know we can create those opportunities to create even larger markets for services and for products. We will create more Australian jobs and attract new investment. So these are just some of the things that we are doing as a coalition to support small businesses. We're focusing on creating a strong economy through building enterprise, through building the opportunities through enterprise that create those jobs. Because that is the only way that our economy will continue to grow. That is the only way that we will have not only the jobs that we need today, but the jobs that we need tomorrow for our children and for our grandchildren. And that's the way that we will keep Australia strong and make it an even better place to do business and to create opportunity. Thank you.